We designed LM Bits specifically to be easy to build on top of uh, for developers to build their own stuff. Um, or, you know, if you if you think that functionality may be useful to other people, then we would love to kind of incorporate it into, into LM Bits and into the LM Bits everyone downloads and runs. So it's kind of like if you imagine it like the... <laughs> Um, the WordPress of uh, a Lightning wallet, it starts simple and then you want additional functionality, then you use extensions to install that functionality in over time. Um, that's kind of the concept behind LM Bits. So we've tried to make it as easy as possible to install the extension. Um, so you're about to watch now a tutorial on uh, how the extension folder and files are laid out and then how to clone an extension um, and start building your own extension. But I warn you, it's not the best tutorial, but I mean, it's something, you can check it out. Um, and it goes, I go through the, the frameworks and things we use for the extension, uh, but it really isn't that hard. It really is quite simple. Um, but these extensions shouldn't take you, once you get used to the frameworks, they shouldn't take too long. You know, you could probably make an extension in like a, um, a short day uh, once you know what you're doing. Um, and I know that some of you developers out there really do. For someone like me, it takes, you know, what might take you a day, it takes me a couple of weeks, but there we are. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so check out, check out the tutorial and then good luck making any extensions. On a side note, I am running uh, the new Focal Fossa by Ubuntu and it's an absolute dream. So any, you know, anyone out there who hasn't tried Linux before, then I highly recommend it, the new Ubuntu update. Um, or anyone who needs to update their distro, then check out Ubuntu uh, Focal Fossa. It's a dream to work with. Right, so uh, we have the GitHub, the Alan Bits GitHub, with some old graphics I need to update. Um, and if we click in here, we can see, go to extensions. Okay, these are all the extensions on the GitHub. Each one of these extensions is entirely self-contained. The folder is entirely self-contained. Um, well, no, actually, that's something of a lie. When you first, when you do, when you, when you run Flask Migrate before doing Flask Run, so before spinning up the server, it builds all the databases for all these different extensions um, and all the extensions which are activated. It builds them all um, and puts them in a separate folder. It may make more sense if I kind of show you through um, on my actual local install of LM Bits. Okay, so if we go to extensions and then if we go for brr, TPOS, that's a good extension to look at. So we've got a bunch of Python files We've got a config JSON, and then we've got a folder called templates, TPOS. Um, now these um, HTML templates, they include, in fact, it probably makes sense for me to spin up my copy of LM bits. Um, degrees there we are. Um, and then I can show you what each one of these files relates to. Yeah, we've got some of the old, old old graphics there for the advertising and sponsorship space. We took those away because it just looked a bit, I don't know, it didn't look too good. Um, but if anyone is interested in advertising or sponsoring the project, then feel free to get in contact with us. Um, what should we call this? Just whatever. And, okay. Manage extensions, TPOS, enable, open. Right, so. This page we can see right now, this is in fact uh, the index.html page here, okay? And then when I make a TPOS, it's one of these point of sales, let's go for USD, let's go for USD, should we? This page, our actual point of sale, which probably looks a little bit better if we make it like a phone, there we are, our actual point of sale, that um, is blah, 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 this page here. Uh, these two HTML documents are the API info and um, about TPOS. So let's have a little look at those in Sublime now, shall we? So if we go to uh, Sublime's a nice uh, text editor. Um, if we go to TPOS here, then we can see all the files and folders and then TPOS, templates, TPOS, we've got our four HTML files here. Now, ah, something I've completely forgot to mention, which I should have mentioned from the beginning. Um, in LM bits, if you go to manage extensions and you go to build your own, enable, and then open this, um, then in here, I'll probably put this video in here actually, um, so this won't look as blank for you. 
it has information on the different frameworks we're using. So Flask is what we're using for our server stuff. Um, each one of the extensions is something called a blueprint, which operates in the Flask server. So Flask is a very simple Python server. We can we can open it up. It's got information about it here. Um, a very simple, easy uh, Python server. It's got loads of documentation on how to get started um, uh, running a Flask server. I mean, it has uh, a couple of tutorials. You know, minimal application here, quick start, and you can you know. Um, install Flask, the Python library, and then get a little Flask server up and running on your computer really quickly. Um, uh, so if you haven't used Flask before, maybe just go through some of these tutorials first before you, you start delving into building uh, LM bits extension. The other framework we're using is Vue.js. That's handling the JavaScript on the front end. Um, uh, it's my first time using Flask, my first time using Vue.js, and also my first time using Quasar, which is a kind of the, more on the, the graphics side. Um, and it's, I think once you once you kind of get used to them, uh, Vue.js, Flask, and Quasar, everything sort of makes sense. But I found that initial introductory period a little bit tricky. Um, so I wish I'd just taken the time to like sit down and do a couple of hours worth of tutorials just off YouTube because there's plenty of stuff of Vue.js, Flask, and, and Quasar too. So yeah, there's some information here about Vue.js. Um, Quasar, that's like our elements. So all of our design elements, which go into LM bits, are from Quasar. I think if we type in like elements Quasar components, components Quasar even. Um, we can, you know, we can look at some examples uh, here of some elements, and then you know the, um, the the code we need to use to to generate those elements. Again, you know. It's Spend a little while, just an hour, an hour or two, doing a couple of Quasar tutorials, and it will make the world of difference for your um, learning curve, I'm sure. But it's 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 mobile ready. Um, so this is, you know, for the example which we've got here, this is kind of this would be the desktop view of those elements. Um, we've got all these little toggle switches and all that kind of stuff, you know. And then um, it also has like a mobile. Um, render of those elements as well so it's packed jam fat full of elements which we can kind of stick to and it gives us a nice can you know nice thread design thread running through our um our project so there are they're the three elements we're using quasar flask and view.js okay um you can call there's an array you can call in any um extension called g and that's got information about the wallets and other extensions which are available to the user. So all quite important and in information in your um, in your extension. So let's have a little look now. So what have we got? I'm just going to go through. Uh, here we are, TPOS. So I'm just going to look at all these files, um, uh, but I'll do it on Sublime. And I'm just going to talk you through what each one of those files does. Okay. So, should we just start from the bottom? Yeah, let's start from the bottom. So, the views api.py. So, these are kind of like our API endpoints, which our extension can call. Um, now, you can, you know, give information about those. So, in, in our actual extension itself, so if we go to TPOS, we've got some info here. So, you know, how to get all the TPOS, how to create a TPOS, how to delete a TPOS. But there's actually a whole bunch of other um, endpoints which you could make use of. And you could include all of them if you wanted to into your API info. Um, I just didn't think it'd be necessary and very relevant. Maybe I should. Uh, but you've got, you know, you've got all sorts in here. So you can, so how we got. So here's a, here's create um, a, a TPOS. So let's have a look at create a TPOS, shall we? So this is the actual endpoint. Now, the um, this extension, if we look at the initiate file here, the blueprint is called TPOS, okay? And it's got some information uh, um, here on the the, the, temp, the template folder we're using. And also if we've got like static files, like JS files for our, any pages we're gonna deliver to people, then we would include those in the in the static. <clears throat> if we wanted to, we could just keep it in the, the template. Anyway, I feel like I'm waffling. So if we go to views api.js, so this is actually, this endpoint is TPOS API v1 tposs okay um so there's always a tpos uh, in front of all of so every extension is basically like prefixed 
with the name of the extension, which we which we have in you know our initiation file here. Um, so we'll take a little look at API create, so um, TPOS create. So what's it doing? It's, it's a post request. Uh, we're doing a post request and we're giving it two fields. We're giving it a name for the TPOS and we're selecting a currency. So the currency for our TPOS. Then um, this uh, function calls uh, the crud.py. So crud.py is where all our kind of like databasey stuff happens. So uh, views API. Um, so that so because we're creating a TPOS, we want to store that data in our database, don't we? So that gets in contact. So here's our create TPOS here. Um, it has those uh, two strings which have come through, the name and the currency, and then also it uh, sends the the wallet ID as well. Um, so the wallet we've we've chosen, and then it inserts into our database, into our TPOS database, that TPOS and stores it in there so people can access it. Um, it generates a, um, a TPOS ID, so a unique ID, and then we include the wallet ID, the name, and the currency. If we have a look at our TPOS here, so we've got the ID, so this is the TPOS ID, the name, and the currency, and then there's also a wallet ID in there as well. And that wallet ID is used for when we want to generate an invoice, obviously it needs to go get the invoice from a wallet using its invoice key. So that's creating um, a uh, TPOS, how it kind of works. Um, the database, which this is going into, it's important to say how that's built. So we've got a file called migrations.py. Um, and my, in migrations, we initialize um, databases we want Flask to build for us when we do Flask migrate. So we're saying create a table if it doesn't exist called TPOS, um, and then uh, fill it with these fields. And if we go to, um, so all the extensions, they generate a database file, and that database file is stored in, um, back in the LMBits directory, it's stored in data, and there you can see all our database files there. So if we open up TPOS, and I'm using uh, DB browser for SQLite, which is a really nice, uh, simple bit, of, uh, simple program for browsing an SQLite um, file. So for those who don't know, an SQLite file is just like a, it's basically just like a text document which we can store database data in, and it means that we don't have to have like, you know, in this particular scenario, my SQL would be um, overkill. We don't need it we can just use these SQLite documents to manage our data. So if we go to browse data, TPOS, um, we can see here there's two um, TPOSs which have been made. Two, that's interesting, because I can only see one there. Let me refresh. Maybe it's including one which I've deleted. So it's got USD and then it's got a Euro one there. I think that might be one which I deleted, unless I'm in a different Am I in a different folder? I'm not in a different folder. So that, yeah, that must be, that's interesting. Let's make a new one. What should we call it? Um, we'll call it room 77. And we'll select AMD, create TPOS, boom. So that's listed. So now, if I go out of there and come back in, there we go, um, our AMD, uh, one is also listed. So I don't know where this one's come from, this Euro one. I think maybe I, I set one up before and then deleted it. So maybe that's that. Um, uh, and then it's asked for, that's maybe why it's not showing. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting one. <laughs> I'll have to keep an eye on that. It might be a bug. Uh, I don't think it is, so don't worry. Um, so so yeah, so, that, so this migrate.py file, that's the thing which builds that database when we initially kind of like start our Flask server, okay? Um, we also need to include that data in models.py. So, um, and this is used for the CRUD um, to, uh, as a way of kind of managing the data. So just make sure, you know, whatever you've got in a database, you've also got in models.py, basically. Um, we have a readme, and people are encouraged to fill out the readme because 
yeah, here we are. We have got some information there in the readme because then we can put that in the um, well, that's in the, the 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 GitHub then, so that's quite useful for people. Okay, views.py, these are the pages you hit. So we only hit one page in this, um, which is the actual, um, or two pages, sorry. We hit, we hit two pages. We hit the uh, this page, okay? Um, and then we give it the user info, and then that gives us all of our point of sales. And then, so you can see there, the user data being passed across. Um, and then the other um, page, which we can actually hit for this, um, you know, with the browser or something for this uh, extension is the actual point of sale itself. So if we click on this point of sale here, okay, uh, this is TPOS and it's got the TPOS ID. So basically Flask knows that whenever this URL is hit, and it's followed by an ID, then it needs to go and fetch the data for that um, for that point of sale terminal. Um, there we are, cool. So it still works, it's good. Go dark mode, pretty sweet. Um, in fact, I'm gonna go dark here now, just to show that I can. Uh, however, if it doesn't have that TPOS ID on the end, um, then it looks to find the user data um, and then use the data to check whether it has uh, the user has any uh, TPOSs which which we've made. So we've covered the API endpoints very briefly. Um, we've covered the different uh, the views.py, which is the different pages we can hit, the README, the models, the migrations, the CRUD. We haven't looked at the configs. So now we're going to look at the configs. So this is just some basic information. Now, if 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 you Say if we rename this config as config.json.example, then when you first when you run Flask, it won't use that folder. It needs to. So it look first thing it does is it looks for the config um, file. So in here we can put our. Um, this is the information you see when you go to manage extensions, and we have TPOS here, shareable POS terminal, and got the little keypad thing. Um, so actually called dial pads. That's an icon set from Quasar. Um, you know, if you wanted to change it, we could type in like Quasar icons, and then Quasar icon sets. Now I think there's a separate page I use for this. What is it? Let's have a little look. Um, and I think it's material icons is the one I'm after. Yes, it is. Right, so they've got all these icons, uh, really nice little icons we can use. So let's go for contact email. So I know, why don't we make a, so contact underscore mail. So let's remember that. And we'll make a uh, extension which I don't know, what could be the eventual name of the extension? You pay to email, should we say. You pay a small lightning invoice and then you can send an email. So you put in someone's email and then you put in, hey, this sounds. This actually could actually be a, a much harder extension to make than I'm first thinking. You put in someone's email, you put in a subject, you put in some text, and then when you click send, it then comes up with an invoice. You have to pay the invoice and then it will actually forward the email onto the uh, recipient. That could be quite cool, actually. So if you have, so the extension functionality could be that I put in my email in the extension. Um, so in this area, he, well, yeah. So in like, you know, this area here, I put in my email and then how much I want people to pay to email me. And then there's a front end page, people put in their, their, their email, their name, um, a message and then they pay. I then get that email sent to me um, and I can choose whether to email them back or not. That's a pretty cool idea for an extension right there. Um, I'm not gonna make the full thing, but we'll, we'll try and make something of it. Uh, so how do we do it? So let's, have we covered all the files in here? No, we haven't looked at the HTML files. So let's have a look at the HTML files. So this is a very standard, um, uh, Let's have a look. Yeah, so this like GUI area here for 
making your TPOSs and then <coughs> accessing the API info. Uh, that's um, all happening here, okay? So you can see here we've got the export CSV. That's here, export CSV. So we try and make all tables exportable to CSV because it's, it's just a useful function to have. Um, and then uh, new TPOS, the button here, um, it's here, so we click on this button. So maybe we should just talk through an element, like what happens when I click through this button? How does this little dialogue thing pop up? Um, right, so let's, let's go from the top, shall we? So we have the button, the new TPOS button. Um, it's deep purple. We could change that, we should change that to deep green. See what happens. Nothing happens because there isn't a deep green. There probably is a green though. Let's change that to green, see what happens. There's a green. So there you are. So, um, but we'll change it back to deep purple because we try and stick with the kind of the purple um, themes and the color scheme. And the two purples we use are purple and deep purple. So just so you know. Um, so what have we got here? So cue card, that's like this one of these box things, basically one of these cards. And then we've got TPOS, this is this thing here, isn't it? TPOS export to uh, um, S CSV. And then it goes through and builds our table rows um, using data, which we declare further down in the file. So here's where our cue card ends. Um, and there's a random div in there. What's that div? Oh, it's for this um, sizing element here. So this sizing element says that we want this to be, you know, uh, 12 columns across or whatever. Um, so I just do a lot of copying and pasting when I'm, uh, when I'm, when I'm doing my extensions now, because we've got all these extensions to work from, so why not copy and paste? So this whole element here, boom, 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 boom. That's the whole thing. But from here to here, is um, is this all this? And you can see here we've got our little buttons for uh, deleting a TPOS. Um, so when we click on this, this this runs a function. Should go and have a look at this function. Uh, yeah, let's go have a look at the function. So down past the um, the bits we can see, we've got the bits which we can't see, which is the JavaScript. Um, so we have. So you can see here we've got all of our options for our um, button. Well, our currency button when we our currency drop down when we click on currency here. Um, so you register in view. So this is view here. So we're running view and we're registering some of these different elements which we're using in our front end, such as the you know drop down box. Um, and then there's this TPOS table columns. So you can see here we've got ID, label. Um, yeah, sorry. So we've got ID, name, and currency. They're the three different uh, columns. And they're, in fact, the columns which get called up here. Where are we? Where are we, calls? Label value, label value. Okay, so we go down. Um, uh, yeah, label, here we go. Uh, ID, name, currency, and then the actual value associated to that label. Uh, so ID, name, and currency, we should have a look here, ID, name, currency, so that's the thing which makes up our table, and then we've got this funny little button on the end, um, which is taking the the row ID, and it's sending it to this de delete TPOS function, which we were actually looking for, we got distracted. Um, so when we go past the declared uh, elements, we have, um, and we can see here, like one of them is like form dialog, I think form dialog is, is this one? Yeah, form dialog show. So basically when we press this button, it changes the form dialog from false, which is what we initiate it as, to, um, to true, uh, which means we can then see it. And that's how we get to see the form element. Um, so once we get past the, uh, yeah, these different um, options, We've then got the methods. The methods are the little JavaScript functions which we're making. So one of those functions is called, the one we're gonna look at is delete TPOS, which is this one here. If we click on um, this little curly bracket, we can see that this whole thing here is the function. Okay, so what does it do? So we can give this function an ID. Um, and if we give it an ID, it 
Um, so first it goes and gets some information about uh, well, all the information it can get, the function will need. And then, um, okay, so it has a little dialog box which comes up saying, are you sure you want to delete this? Uh, okay is in orange and then cancel in gray. Once you click okay, so on okay, so you've clicked okay, um, it does a API request to um, this endpoint here, TPOS, API v1 TPOSS. Let's go check that out. So here, API v1 TPOSSS, and it's got the TPOS ID, and the method is delete. So this is where it does the API request to. And then it, what does it give it? It gives it the um, the TPOS ID, which is adding on the end there. Um, and then it also gives it the admin key for the wallet. <clears throat> the admin key for the yeah the admin key for the wallet um, uh, because you're deleting it, which seems seems to make sense. And then there's a response, which is yeah it's been deleted or you know no it hasn't been deleted I suppose it catches an error. if there's an error it catches an error and then it displays it in the little error box at the bottom. So if we see that in work, in action, so if we click on this it says we should want to delete it orange gray, see. And I say, yeah, okay, I want to delete it, and it deletes, and there's no errors. If there were an error, it would pop up here on the bottom. Um, and that is the delete TPOS function. Um, let's have a little look at this endpoint and see what's going on in this endpoint, shall we? So in this endpoint, yeah, it's got, so it's, it's making sure that we've got the admin key for the wallet, which we have. And then it's taking the TPOS ID and it's doing a get TPOS. So if we go to our CRUD, there will be one called get TPOS, here it is. Um, and it uses that TPOS ID to um, enter the database, the TPOS database, and then using the ID, get the, the whole row, and it returns that whole row, okay? So once it's returned that whole row, we've got some error checking, which is always important, I'm really bad at. Um, so you know if the TPO if 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 there's if it has no if nothing comes back from get TPOS it says you know TPOS doesn't exist um, or if it's someone else's TPOS and you haven't actually got permission to delete it then it says not your TPOS um, and then if it does delete it just returns a status no content and then that's it um, in the uh, create TPOS function it returns you know because deleting it just return anything there's no data to return. But with the create TPOS function, which similarly goes to, if we hover over here, it goes to that CRUD file and it goes to this create TPOS and then fills our database up with a new TPOS. Um, that returns um, uh, the information about it being created, um, which it can then use to, to fill. Um, uh, it can then use to fill, where is it? Let me show you. Um, this object thing here. So this has got all of our information about our TPOSs, um, which fills up this table and it's kind of stored in that, that object file there. Um, and that's pretty much it. So it's, it's probably quite confusing. Uh, I tell you a good place to start is the good old hacking method of, let's see if we can do this now without causing too many errors or causing any errors. Um, I hope we can, cause we've got, Done, done quite well so far. Let's just take extensions. Now this really isn't going to work and it is gonna throw up errors and I know why it's gonna throw up errors. If we take TPOS now and just copy and paste him, okay? And then if we rename that and we're gonna call it, ooh, call it email for my email extension idea. Um, let's have a look, where is email? Is email, there he is. So I'm just gonna go through and change all of the files, I'm gonna be really cheeky and I'm just gonna rename folders, files, and I'm just gonna change them all to email um, and just do search for places to, to change everything. Um, so what do we need to change? We don't need to change them, we just need, really need to just change this one for example purposes. So find, replace, I'm gonna do case sensitive. Um, I'm gonna say all the TPOSs with a big case um, I want to have a capital email, replace all. And then all the, um, 
TPOSs with small case, I'm going to replace just with regular normal email. Replace all. Let's have a little look down here. Email, email, email. Yep, that looks pretty cool. Like it's worked. Save. And then uh, I'm going to leave that. I'm not, I'm not going to go anywhere near that folder. I'll tell you what, I'll just rename it so it doesn't throw up any areas. Um, and then in here, I'm going to change that to email. That's all I need to change in there in the, init the init initializing folder. And then the config will change to email and a description. Uh, pay to clean our battery. Pay to email me. Um, and then, oh, what was this called? Something mail. Mm. Contact, contact mail. You could, in fact, just go through and just look at all the icons and then use those to inspire you to make extensions. Now, that could probably work because that's basically what I've just done right now. Uh, contact mail. Um, there we are. It's actually a pretty cool extension. I might actually make this. Uh, crud. So, oh yeah. Find, replace. This thing's freaking me out. Get rid of that. TPRS to email. Connor, yep, 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 yep. Replace all. Boom. And find, replace. And then we'll do the same with the higher case TPOS. All those get changed to a capital email. Replace all. Boom. Migrations. Um, email. Z and email and that's it I would obviously change that to my email centric um, fields but um, I'm not going to do that so here we go find replace TPOS email replace all find replace TPOS email Place all. Um, do the same. Boom. And I might, yeah, I'm glad that because I keep somehow knocking off the case sensitive things, so which I don't want to do. My TPRS email, replace all. Boom. Save. I saved all the files. Save. Ooh, I didn't save that one. I didn't save that one. Right, so I've saved them all, okay? And I, yeah, I turned off LM bits. Now, I think all I need to do actually is just do flask migrate and hope it doesn't throw up an error. Ooh, didn't like that, did it? Um, no such command as migrate. Oh, that's annoying. Um, so flask run. Let's see what happens now. Ah, we get an error. What's our error? Let's have a look here. Email uh, py something doesn't doesn't like this, does it? Module name partially initialized LM bits extensions email most likely circular import. Okay, let me have a little look. So we've got email that looks fine to me. Email, email, email. That all looks okay to me. Don't really see what's going on there. Let's exit out. Um, let's exit out of the shell environment. I think the copy of LM bits I've got running on my laptop might in fact be the older version where we didn't have the flask migrate. No such command migrate. What's that even mean? Um, so yeah, for you, you should just be able to do flask migrate and then it should just magically make that database file for you. Um, but for me, for some reason, I'm not allowed. Mm, let's just do flask run again. And nothing's going to be fixed because it didn't actually fix anything. I'm sure some of you proper developers out there are like hitting your head against the screen now. You know exactly what's wrong. Um, import module name. 
But this is a good lesson in reading the errors, which I'm really, really, really bad at. In line nine, from Ellen Bits extensions, mail, import, mail, ext. Cannot import the name mail, ext, from Ellen Bits extensions, email, much like you do circular import. Just trying to give me information, but I'm too much of a dumbass to understand what the information is. So email. So it's where, 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 where's, 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 where's have a look where the error is. So the error is in views API. Okay. And it's up here. We're trying to get, we're trying to import email underscore ext from Ellen Bits extensions email. Ellen Bits extensions email that exists. And we're trying to import email ext which is from here, which also exists. So why are you moaning? <laughs> it should just work. Ah, ha, ah, ha, ah. there we go. <laughs> Brilliant. I'm sure all of you saw that except me. Let's try again. Nice, we're in, fantastic. Okay, ooh, please work. I was going to have to reshoot that whole tutorial then. Uh, manage extensions. Email. Cool. There's my extension I've made. What happens when I enable it? Doesn't crash. Open it. Ah, it crashes. What have I done? Template not found. Email. Email HTML. Ah, there we are. It's pretty simple. Um, so, but this is a good lesson. You know, like, don't be scared by these screens. I Before, I used to get scared by these screens, and it just used to freak me out. But actually read them, and they, they kind of tell you what's going on. Um, and clearly... We've got all these things named uh, wrong. Um, but even though I've just done like, you know, a really cheeky search replace job on this, and I'm in, cool, new email, ace. Now, it would just, now, even though I've just done a copy replace thing, it wouldn't be too hard just to go through and like cull and change the, um, the you know, the inputs for this form um, and like this table to be able to display, you know, to be able to store, that's probably the first job, is store. So I set up a form, I put in an email address, and I say how much I want to charge people. Then um, I can worry about the front end form of somebody actually filling it out um, and, and having an invoice which they need to pay in order for it to get sent. And then, in fact, probably take the email part out all completely, and you could just have a front end, someone puts in a subject, and they put in a message, they pay, and then I just get the message in the back end. It just appears here in the back end, and I just have it turn up in my table. That's probably the way to do it. Um, uh, and they could also, the customer could also put in an email, and I could just email them back on, on a proto mail or something. Otherwise, we'd have to like be getting Ellen bits, like hook it up to an email, and then get it to send an email through an email and receive an email through an email, which is also something probably worth doing at some point, but I cannot be asked doing now. So, um, Pay to pay to pay to chat, I suppose, or pay to pay to ask a question, um, and then somebody can ask you a question and pay pay you. So that's the end of the tutorial. <laughs> for better or for worse, I hope it hasn't confused you too much. Um, just you know, go to manage extensions, go to build your own, open it up, have a little look at those frameworks, um, uh, do what I did, you know, really hacky way, just copy and paste a folder, change the names, replace all the names. Uh, make sure you, um, if they've got like a higher case, that you replace the higher case with a lower case and make sure it's case sensitive or else you'll come and done there. Um, and then you should be able to at least get your extension like up and running and it's just a case of changing data around then. Uh, so thanks for watching and good luck making extensions. Oh, also, if you um, want to chat to us, um, you can catch us on the Mattermost, uh, which I'll put in the link actually to this video. Um, uh, so we have a, a Mattermost setup on Fullmost server where you can chat to us if you want to and ask like questions or if you want to be a bit more formal and ask more formal questions then hit us up on the GitHub um, and have a little chat with us there. Um, we do often have bounties available as well so I think there's still one bounty left for 0.02 uh, BTC if you want to make an extension. If someone out there wants to make the pay to send me a message extension then you can get yourself 0.02 Bitcoin which is pretty, that's like 100 20 quid or something at the moment so it's you know it's a little sweetener um uh so yeah please feel free to do that anyway thanks for watching and have a good evening uh, day uh, morning wherever you are